Alandra, are you back? I think Elder Landry, uh, Elder Landry's in the process of uh, communicating with our speakers tonight. He hadn't made it back yet. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, there might be someone that maybe just has another testimony that we didn't have time for earlier. We're just trying to give him a little time, just trying to give him a little time uh, to uh, come back online. Pastor Stanton is on now. Oh, oh, he is? Okay. All right, good.
You can go ahead, Pastor Simpson. I'm back. Uh, Pastor Stenson was having a problem getting on, but I think he, he, he should be coming in now. You have to unmute, Pastor. Thank you, my, my dear. God bless everyone. Go. Hey, Pastor, how you doing this evening? Hey, man, I'm blessed by the best. God is so good. I'm just thankful to be in the land of the living. Praise the Lord. These very serious times in which we live. These are exciting times. Yes. Uh, we should be excited because many prophets and wise men prophesied and talked about these kind of prophecies that, that we're seeing unfold. I was sharing with some of my saints earlier today on a call that uh, there was a uh, news flash in Shanghai, China. And the people over there got afraid because they thought the world was coming to an end. It was, they thought it was Armageddon already. The sky was blood red and, they, and the water had turned to blood. Isn't that something? Yes, sir. Remind us of the plagues that's going to be poured out in these last days. So, brothers and sisters, we're seeing all kind of miraculous manifestations in these last days that we're in the end times. Brothers and sisters, I count it a joy to be with you as always. It's been a little while since I last spoke to this body of believers, but I'm always thankful to be able to share a word of encouragement to the saints of God and the yeah. we in SDA Church in Baton Rouge on behalf of your very distinguished leader and my colleague and my uh, best friend, Pastor T. Ron Wegar. Uh, yes, we're going to continue to keep him in prayer as he's recuperating from eye surgery. Uh, he is a real trooper. And I thank God for him and his ministry and his precious family, Sharon and Desi and Faith and Jessica and the grandbabies are very dear to the Stinson's home. Uh, brothers and sisters, there's a word for, for us this evening out of the book of Genesis. If you have your Bible, I want to invite you to turn that with me. <laughs> And we'll look at in your hearing Genesis chapter 28. And we'll read verses 18 through 22. Genesis 28, 18 through 22. Genesis 28, 18 through 22. And the Bible says, then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured all on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been Luz previously. Then Jacob uh, made a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I am, I come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. And all, and all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. And in verse one of Jacob 29 one. So Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. Brothers and sisters, if I could have your attention, I won't be with you long, uh, but if I can have your attention for a few moments, I'd like to talk from the subject, you've got to build an altar. You've got to build an altar. Let us pray. Father, it's not my sister or my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So we invite your presence tonight, Lord, to be with us for a few moments, we pray. In Jesus' name, the church said amen, amen, and amen. You've got to build an altar. Brothers and sisters, it was a time of crisis in the life of Jacob. And times of crisis usually are times of loneliness. God had promised Jacob that he would bless him. But God was strong. Uh, but Jacob, rather, was strong-willed and stubborn, ambitious and self-reliant. 
Oh, how often when God promises to bless us, to do for us what he seek to do for us, we seek to seek help to help God, speed up the process of the blessing. Uh, God told Jacob that he would bless him, but Jacob had tarried for his blessing. And when it didn't come when he had anticipated, he determined to be blessed by fair means if possible or by trickery if necessary. The blessing needed to be confirmed by the blessing and the benediction of Isaac. Years were passing, so Jacob and his mama, Rebecca, take matters into their own hands. Because of his lack of faith, patience, and trust, Jacob must flee from his parents' house to his mother, brother's house. Brothers and sisters, when we start trying to help God out and when we start trying to take matters into our own hands, we typically make a mess of something and make a, 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 a make it worse than the situation it is That's uh, right. before we got into it. I reminded, I'm reminded of a story of you and I both have read in the book of Genesis talking about when Abraham was promised that he was going to have a child, a man child, in his ripe old age. And Rebecca laughed. And uh uh the Bible says that uh, Rachel laughed and 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 uh, basically, brothers and sisters, it's when you start trying to help God, and, and she said, "Well, look, go, won't you go to my handmaiden, Hagar?" Y'all know the story mm -hmm. and how uh, she was trying to help out uh, Abraham in this situation. They didn't trust God. And he ended up having a baby by his handmaiden, Hagar. Amen? Amen? When you start trying to help God, you mess up the situation. And we see here that this brother, his first night of his journey, he, he lays down to sleep. A failure, a fugitive with no possessions but the shirt on his mm. back and his staff. Right. With only a stone for a pillar, yet he, in his sleep, he has a vision. In the night, he has a dream of a ladder that stretches from earth to heaven. And at the top of the ladder stands Jesus while angels are ascending and descending. That ladder uh, symbolizing the fact that Christ connects man in his weakness with his source of infinite power. Also forever showing us that when man is at his worst, God is at his best. And whenever we feel lonely and abandoned, heaven is only a prayer way. Can I get a witness? Amen. This vision brought Jacob to a turning point in his life and career. He learned that night of the, of the power, the presence, and the pardon and protection of God. Jacob awakes out of his sleep, and he says, surely the Lord is in this place. And I'm here to tell you tonight that God's presence prompts action. He rose up, and when God has been good to you and brings you out, uh, you cannot sit down politely with your hands folded. You've got to get up. When God has brought you over the rough side of the mountain, you've got to get up. Have you ever been sick tonight? And folk came to see you, but when it looked like you weren't going to make it, and the, and the visits from the friends were few, but God showed up and touched your body. Well, you better yeah. get up. Have you ever gotten yourself in a situation that you, you, that you, you forced your way into? And God warned you, but you went there anyway. But yet in his tender mercies, he reaches down and brings you out of the muck and the mire. You better get up. You thought when you were in, uh, uh, in love, <clears throat> you said, ladies, that he was tall, dark, and handsome. You said he was the best thing that ever happened to you. You said, if I don't have him, I'll die. But God said, child, I know what is best for you. And he delivers you from a certain miserable relationship. You might be crying now. You might feel lonely now. You might never think that you will ever love again now, but you better get up. Listen tonight, church. After we worship God, we must leave the house of God and go on a journey. We face problems in our lives when we don't want to take our journey. Genesis 29.1 says that after Bethel, Jacob takes his journey. 
God allows each of us to go through our journeys in, our, in order to prepare us for God's blessings. And if we don't deal with the, those problems on this level of our journey, we will face them again in another on another level. So whenever we face problems and trials in our lives, whenever we face tests in our lives, it is not proper or, con or correct to blame them all on the devil. Can I get a witness? Mm. God allows right. problems or tests to come our way to see uh, whether or not we will face that problem with him or will we try to handle them by ourselves. God will continually allow those tests to be taken until we graduate. I read some in the Spirit of Prophecy where Ellen White says that God will bring a test to us or a trial over and over again until we finally get the victory of it. Right. And then after hearing from the voice of God, Jacob takes his journey. And it is a 450 mile journey that takes him into the house of his uncle Laban. And there he begins the process of, of, of courting Rachel, Laban's youngest daughter, for seven years. Lord have mercy. There was a time when a man had to, to prove his love. After the end of seven years, he goes into the tent and patiently waits on his grand prize. The Bible says that Laban sends his daughter into him who was fully covered. That's a sermon by itself. She gets to the bed and spends the night. And in the morning, he turns over. And instead of seeing fine shape like an hourglass Rachel, he looks eyeball to into eyeball into the face of old Claus eyed Leah. And the receiver has been deceived. And he had to work to another seven years. Brother, sister, don't pay to try to trick people. What goes around, come around. The Bible says, uh, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man so that shall he also reap. He that so to the flesh shall right. of the free, flesh reap corruption. But he that so to the spirit shall the spirit reap life everlasting. Yeah. When you trick people and you have a history of being a flim flammer, like Jacob was a deceiver, Brother, somebody, trick, somebody smart enough to trick you. That's why you better always treat people the way you want to be treated. Amen? Amen. Uh, my brother, uh, he says here that uh, instead of, of, of blaming all of your troubles on the devil, you need to go back in your own life and see who treated you like dirt. Who did you talk mm -hmm. about? Huh? Yeah, who did you disrespect? Yeah, uh, who did you tease? Who did you make your last laugh? Amen? Uh, so brothers and sisters, what goes around, come around. After 14 years, the one that Jacob loves the most is fruitless. This means that sometimes what you want does not always come through expected channels. Did you get that or did you miss it? You can't limit God. You can't tie him down. You can't force his hand. When God wants to bless you, he will bless you like he wants to bless you and through the means and channels that he chooses to bless you. That's right. You can't limit God. This means that you must learn how to thank God for disappointments. A strange thing on this journey. Uh, he had to work all these years. Jacob finally receiving his emancipation from the cruel yeah. treatment of Laban, his uncle. He seeks to make his journey back home. He finds out that his brother Esau is looking for him. Esau has right. 400 warriors in waiting. Are y'all listening to me? Mm, yes, sir. On your journey, you will have a, to wrestle with God. And whenever you wrestle with God, he will have to break something. When you walk mm. with God, it won't always be peaches and cream. You will have Great. to wrestle. And you, don't, and, you, and you don't think you're going to hold on to God but God will be holding on to you. That's when right. You wrestle with God, you might get your hair all messed up. When you wrestle with God, you might lose your friends. When you wrestle with God, you might lose your children. When you wrestle with God, you might lose your husband or your wife. When you wrestle mm -hmm. with God, you might lose your job. When you wrestle with God, you might get your life turned upside down and inside out before you wrestle. Mm -hmm. Before he had to break something, you thought you were all that when he broke your finances 
you found out that money is not so important, huh? Before you met God, you were running, but now you walk with a limp, huh? The limp symbolizing that it is only through our helplessness that God can use us. You have a limp, but only God can put you back together again. Yes, Brothers and sisters, on his journey, he had to face his brother. He had to face his brother Esau. Now listen to me, church. Be careful how you treat folk in this life. Did That's you get right. it? Did you miss it? Because the same folk you pull down in your life, you're going to meet them on their way back down. There used to be a song. I'm sure y'all have heard it. Uh, be careful how you treat people on your way to the top, because you may have to treat me. You may have to meet those same people on your way back down the ladder. Amen. Amen. Our problem tonight, brothers and sisters, is that we want the blessing without the process. Mm -hmm. We want to arrive, but we don't want to take the trip. We want the mm -hmm. mountain, but we refuse to climb. We want the miracle, but we refuse the struggle. We want the sunrise, but we reject the dark clouds. But God has to take us through the fire. We've gotten so comfortable with our uh, positions and possessions. Uh, so God has to turn up the heat so we yes, can see yes. who our friends are, huh? Where that's our treasure right. is, that's where your heart will be. So Jacob made a terrible mistake, brothers and sisters. Instead of going straight to Bethel, he settles first at Shechem. This is nothing more serious than staying away from where God is sending you. Shechem. What do you mean, Pastor? Shechem gives us the sad story of the rape of Jacob's only daughter, Dinah. And Simeon and Levi become murderers. How often do our children suffer when God tells us to go one place and do one and thing, worse. a certain thing, but instead of obeying God, we stay around our Shechem, and our worse. worldly carers. I don't know what you, your Shechem is this evening. Instead of centering our lives around the house of God, and the altar of God, we center our lives around the jobs and the cares of this world, and our children suffer. Mm. Do you want me to break it down? Go ahead, Pastor. Last but not least, God always allows, and God allows Jacob to see to settle down. This means that when I've learned the lessons that God meant for me to learn, as I obey and trust in God and follow him in his precepts, I get rooted. So when problems come, they may blow up or blow me, but they don't move me. The leaves in my life may fall. Some of the branches in That's my right. spirit might give way, but I am That's right. All of us must That's build right. an altar of God in our own hearts. And if we put the altar in our hearts, whenever we are, wherever we are, Jesus is. But we must yes, take sir. our journey. We must learn our lessons. We must accept our priorities. And when God allows us to settle, we will look back and cry out, God me, O oh, thou yes, Jehovah, sir. pilgrim through this barren land. I'm weak, but you're mighty. God is with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want yes. no more. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. Yes, sir. Brothers, sisters, I don't know about you, but we serve a God who's able. So I, as I close tonight, my prayer for you is that you and I will learn how to build our altars. Yes. Altars of sacrifice. Yes. Altars of deliverance. Altars of humility. Build an altar of kindness and love to one another. Build an altar of, of, of providing for your families and, and, and being the kind of man of God he's called you to be in these last and evil days. We've got to learn how yeah. to build an altar. And if we build yeah. our altar and allow the Lord to turn us around and give us what he would have us to have in these last days, not what we want, but what the That's Lord right. wants, we're going to be some powerful beings and some amazing Christians in these last and evil days. So my prayer tonight as I close, learn how to build an altar. Yes. You need to have a place in your home, brothers and sisters, that 
a secret closet that you could go to. I call it a, a war room, a prayer room, a war room where you go and you spend quality time in that war room, agonizing with the Lord, pleading with him for your sins and weeping between the yeah. porch and the altar of the sins that's happening in the church. And that we will make a calling and election sure and surrender all of our heart's desire to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my prayer tonight for the Berean uh, Baton Rouge Seventh-day Adventist Church is that you will learn how to spend quality time with the Lord daily by yeah. building an altar and giving him all the glory and giving him all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Spence. Folks, if you will unmute yourself, let the pastor know how he blessed your soul tonight. Amen. Amen. Truly a blessing, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that word. Yes. Praise God. Yes, yes, yes. Quality is good. good. All the time. Thank yes, you sir. so much for your yes. message tonight. Amen. Much, You're so much, welcome. Much, much appreciated, Pastor. Much appreciated. God bless you. So, folks, at this time, uh, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, we welcome you to contribute and support it. Uh, we have three ways to give. Uh, you can Give by mail, mail that your gifts directly to the church at 4555 Fairfields Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70802. Or you can give online uh, by visiting www.bereanbatonrouge.com and click on online giving. And we also have a cash app, uh, dollar sign Berean 4555. Whatever the spirit leads you to do will be much, much, much appreciated. Um, we, we would love for you to join this ministry and support this ministry as we try to bring the word of the Lord to folks in, this last, in these last days. So uh, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Elder Manuska to come and give us our benediction. And then we will go into our afterglow and discuss what we what we just heard. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your man servant, Lord, as we go. Lord, the remainder of our week, I just pray, Lord, that we will keep our connection close to you, that we'll be reminded yes. that after you've taken us through, Lord, that we'll build an altar of gratitude, an altar of remembrance of what you have done for us. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So at this time, we are um, going to our afterglow. If anybody would like to share what that message meant to them tonight and what they got from the message, please feel free. Share it with us at this time. Anyone? I wanted to say the part that, you know, I, I kind of took away from my own personal journey is him, he, he kind of went through a litany of, um, uh, metaphors when he said not metaphors but when he said you know we want the miracle but we don't want the pro the, the adversity right. we want the right. we want the blessing but we don't want the process and that's what i'm you know as i get older and I, as i grow in my walk with christ I, i'm realizing that the, the process is the reward the destination we will never know what the destination look what is going to look like regardless of what we desire from god regardless of what we're asking god to do we are ne we'll never know what the destination looks like until we get to the destination. That's right. But the process is what I, I see every day. The process is what I go through. And the process is ultimately how I actually grow in my walk with Christ. So that, because that's how I meet God in a new way. The process is how I, I learn about myself and learn about the things that God wants to remove out of me. Right. So I'm learning. The process is ultimately the reward. Because when if I glean what I need to glean out of the process, the destination will take care of itself, and I will my character will be ready for the destination. So that's what I took out of his word tonight. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? What did you glean from the word tonight? You know, when you when you listen at that and you and you think about how a lot of the things we go through and, and we, we have this tendency to blame it on the devil 
but a lot of the hardships and things that we have to go through and the things we have to deal with, we bring them on ourselves because we want to take control and fix this or fix that. And, 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 and then when it gets all messed up, then we want to call on the Lord. But by that time, you know, we, we have been through so many heartaches and hardships, you know, we begin to wear down. But we can avoid some of that stuff if we would just go to God first and give it to Him. Anyone else would like to share anything? Okay, well, Pastor Jesse, we sure appreciate you being with us tonight. Uh, thank God for you. Uh, we praise His holy name for the message that you gave to us tonight to encourage our hearts. May God continue to bless you and keep you and just maximize the effectiveness of your ministry. And we thank you so much for being with us tonight. So at this time, if we would, we will just close out our prayer. Our Father and our God, we just so thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to just assemble and hear your word. Words of encouragement, Lord, words of hope. Words that keep us from growing weary of well-doing. Continue to saturate our minds, strengthen our hearts, Lord. That regardless of what we face, Lord, whether it's the hardships coming from the devil or the hardships we inflict upon ourselves, Lord, please forgive us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Strengthen God and keep us, Lord, that your will will become our way and that we will live, Lord, such a manner to glorify and uplift your holy name. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In the worthy name of Jesus, we do ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and good night.